are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Another fan episode right here on Locked On Spurs. We're going to be playing another game of Buy and Sell Spurs Edition. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. I always say this, man. It, the offseason is just great just to bring in more fans, let them take the mic, let them express their views, and give us the views of the fan base. And that's what we're going to do. For those of y'all who've never been to a Locked On Spurs or listened to a Locked On Spurs fan episode, a fan comes on, gives his personal opinion on a few topics, and then kind of gives the overall general vibe of the fan base regarding said topic. But in this case, the guest on the hot seat is going to do a game of buy and sell. And is he going to buy? Is he going to sell? Various topics regarding the silver and black. Who is back again? He is Eric Hicks. Eric, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. Hey, thanks for having me back, Jeff. By the way, great collection, man. I love your uh, Spurs basketball encased in that glass box there. You got all your uh, basketball cards up there. Pretty good collection, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, my recent uh, – recent, uh... One that I just acquired was another uh, Josh Primo rookie signatures card, which is a uh, nice college. Yeah, it's pretty good. How, how, how much did that set you back? Uh, that one set me back maybe like about fifty bucks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah for those of y'all who who, are, who obviously uh, aren't seeing this, but Eric has his camera on, and I'm looking at all his uh, sweet basketball card collection. Make sure to follow Eric on Twitter at Red Hicks. Uh, do it right now. Great follow. Good fan as well. And he's always willing to come on Locked on Spurs. <clears throat> Eric, you've you've seen these buy or you heard of these buy and sell games. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Let's uh, let's get you a nice little warm up one. How's that? Something right. nice and easy. So, as you know, the uh, Spurs were repeatedly linked with Zach Levine. And it got to the point where DeJounte Murray not just Loki, he blatantly tried to get Levine in a Spurs jersey when he tweeted out a, a Photoshop photo of Levine in a Spurs jersey. Nevertheless, reports are saying that Zach Levine is going to stay in San, in, in Chicago, uh, signing like a big deal. I think it's like $200 million, something ridiculous. But just because he signs in Chicago doesn't mean the Spurs can't work out a sign and trade. Are you buying or selling that despite the fact that Levine is likely to sign with the Bulls, should the Spurs still chase Levine? I'd go ahead and I'd buy that. I would still, I'm not saying that I would go all, all in, but, you know, I would just explore, maybe make a couple of phone calls. Um, yeah. You know, uh, like you said, I believe, uh, you know, he got linked to DeJounte Murray and, and he yeah. sent out that photo. I believe he even got fined for it or something like that. Um, and you know, they, everybody knows they're from the same area. Um, uh, so there, there was a little bit of smoke there, but like you said, uh, now there's reports coming out that, you know, he's going to end up staying in Chicago. And I believe maybe, uh, you know, San Antonio wasn't one of the spots that he was maybe attracted to, but, um, you know, he's played for pop before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he knows how, you know, pop uh, system, you know, he, I kind of just think that he knows maybe what would be what would be expected and how it would work. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, everybody got excited, you know, mm -hmm. that when it happened. And we were good with that. But, you know, I, I'd still make some phone calls and stuff like that. Do you think uh, Levine is a piece to push the Spurs over the edge out of the play-in games into the playoffs? Uh, I think that they would still be right there. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, with the uh, – you know, this coming up year with, you know, unless like something drastically changes, um, you know, they're, you know, they're telling Spurs fans like, hey, don't get your hopes up, like, you know, or your expectations like ridiculously high. And uh, I think a lot of Spurs fans feel that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, but as long as they're seeing changes, as long as, you know, they're seeing things happen, you know, they're happy for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I'm glad that they're happy for that. You know what I mean? It is an exciting yeah. time right now. You know what I mean? This yeah. is probably one of our most exciting off seasons, you know, we've had in quite a while, you know, and the Spurs fans see that, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, we were told, you know, what to expect from this last season. And I think the Spurs, they took that really well. 
You know what I mean? They were like, hey, look, this is what it's going to be. You know what I mean? Um, it's going to be a rebuilding. And this mm-hmm. first, it's, you know, Spurs fans understand it. You know, they didn't drag them or the Spurs too much. You know what I mean? So um, mm-hmm. that's kind of how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, you know, just again, just because Levine uh, is likely to resign with the Bulls doesn't mean the Spurs can still pursue a trade. They have enough uh, money to absorb that contract that he's reportedly going to sign with the Bulls. And it could still happen, although it may be it's a longer shot now, but it's still on the table. Uh, once again, we are talking with Eric Hicks right here on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. Locked On is partnering with Arcade One Up to give away three free NBA Jam Shack machines. Stay tuned for later in the show to learn how to enter. And right here, we're doing a fan episode, a buy and sell fan episode of Locked On Spurs. Yeah, you know, Levine, you know, obviously brings the um the offensive punch that the that the Spurs need. How many times did we see this last year? Eric, the Spurs fan base, other types saying DeJounte can't do it all. DeJounte can't do it all. Now, Kelton came on a little bit, well, not a little bit, quite a bit strong towards the end of the season, where he was dropping 20 plus almost on the nightly. But do you think DeJounte still needs that help, or do you think like maybe could have been addressed by with Levine, or you think you have faith in Vassell and KJ, you know, to bring in that added offensive punch. Uh, I still, still, I think everybody believes that he still needs some help. Um, I think that was evident this, this past year. Um, I'm not, I don't know if a Zach Levine would, uh, I mean, it would help. It would help. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it would get him over, you know, into the, into the playoffs. And then, um, and like you going back to what you're saying, you know, should they re- really go ahead and maybe throw a bag at him? I think one of the things that also, you know, we haven't seen is remember he's just coming off of a knee surgery. I know it's not a yeah. big, big knee surgery, but um, I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about throwing a bag at somebody and who's coming off of a surgery like that, and you haven't seen how they, how they've done yet. You know what I mean? So that's kind of a little scary. Yeah. All right, well, let's keep on moving on here on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. We're playing a game of buy and sell with Eric Hicks. All right, Eric, we're going to stick with the Levine theme, but throw in another name that the Spurs have been linked to in, in uh, free agency. That is restricted free agent, Suns DeAndre Ayton. So if you can only pick one to throw a bag at, Ayton versus Levine, which one would you do? And why? And do you think I'm going to reverse it on you? Do you think Spurs fans would buy or sell your pick? If I had to choose between the two, you know, that those and you know, both of them have injuries, honestly. But um, I would actually, I would think I would try, and I hope the Spurs fans don't bring out the tomatoes on this one. But I would <laughs> actually go for Levine and. The, the DeAndre Ayton, I know the Spurs fans are hurting for bigs, and I am too. You know, they just – they want to see the Spurs get, you know, either forwards or center, you know, and I get that. But we would have – to my understanding, if we wanted to get DeAndre Ayton, it would more likely be a sign and trade. So we would have to see what we had to give up, mm-hmm. you know, to package for that. Um, and – I, I don't know if it would be worth it. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. you, know, you got the, you know, he had that little in the last game of the season for them. You know, he had that little flare up with Monty Williams, and uh, you know there was even stories of maybe they saying that he gave up on the team. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what I mean? That kind of concerns me, uh, especially when you're going to be having to give somebody max money. Right. You know what I mean? And you know, Monty Williams, he has you know the reputation around the NBA of what where he's like one of the nicest coaches in the world. Right. Um, if he comes over to San Antonio, you know, Pop's going to Pop's gonna tear into him if he need be. So sure. if he can't put up with Monty Williams, I'm, you know, it's also concerning him when he comes <laughs> to Pop. I know, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting to see that. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue this um, this topic right now when we get back from the break. But make sure to follow Eric on Twitter, at Eric 7 do it right now and chat with him about his take so far on if the Spurs should chase Levine and Aiden versus Levine, who would you pick? I want to talk to you about Built Bar. Built Bar has a new uh, flavor, a mud pie. 
Uh, they're always coming out with new f- flavors every single time. It feels like it's almost weekly now over at Built Bar. Well, Built has really outdone themselves with this new mud pie flavor. For the first time ever, Built is introducing a new mud pie flavor in both mud pie bar and mud pie puff. Not sure what mud pie tastes like? Well, if you're a chocolate fan, you better sit down for this one. The new mud pie bar is rich whipped cream, chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate, topped with cookies and cream crumble. Go get you some right now at Built.com. Try it soon as possible. You need to hurry because the mud pie par bar, excuse me, and the mud pie puff are only available for a limited time. Visit built.com to taste the deliciousness for yourself. Look, mud pie bars and puffs are available at built.com right now. They're going fast because they are delicious. But like all built bars, they're covered 100 percent of real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. And what's great about built is that their bars are made with collagen protein which absorbs into your body uh, more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Mud pie bars uh, are packed with just 16 grams of protein, only 150 calories, 8 grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most delicious creamy chocolate mud pie and wrapped it just for you. You're going to love the new mud pie built bar and built puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just a need to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar to get right now. And they even taste better than a candy bar. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. You won't regret it. Get yourself the mud pie bars and puffs right now. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. We are back with Eric Hicks on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. And we're playing a game of buy and, sp- buy and sell Spurs edition. We have an important favor to ask of you, though. We put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcast. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now. Get started. Won't take you very long. And everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 gift cards from Ticketmaster. Uh, just take our audience survey. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. You know, Eric, uh, before we took a break here, we were talking about Aiden versus uh, Levine. Is it just me or it just feels like Aiden, does he really give you what Perto is not giving the Spurs right now? I think he can. But, you know, like I said, with that that last game, you know, you know, you know that they got that story about when uh, the Spurs are bringing somebody on board amongst the coaching staff in the front office. Like one of the very first questions they asked, they were just like, is he a spur? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then when everything happened during that last game, it, I think it kind of made, like, made everybody get like the stink face. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you know, we were, it's, it's exciting, you know, that that option is there, but, um, you, you know, Oh, there's there's still there's still a couple of questions around him um right now what would, would a lot the majority of spurs fans would love to get deandre Ayton. i'm not gonna lie and you know i wouldn't mm-hmm. i wouldn't i wouldn't be mad at it either uh, are, but wait, are you are you saying that spurs fans would sell on your pick that being um passing up on Ayton for levine i think that they would I think that wow. they would. I think that they would. I think they would want Aiton. I think that they would. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because the majority you have a lot of Spurs fans who want to see bigs. And, yeah. And you know that uh you've seen um plenty of times when you post, you know, just some like hey uh Spurs brought in um yeah Ty, Ty Washington in for just a workout, and yeah. then all of a sudden it seems like tomatoes are coming through the thing. They're like, Oh, yeah, another guard, another guard, you know, it happens all the time. And I understand why, you know, everybody understands why. But uh, so, you know, it just seems like that fan base is just, you know, they're like, oh, can we just get somebody? And it was like six, nine and above, like, please. Or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's why I say I think that they would like to go that route with it. All right. We'll see what the Spurs fans have to say once they hear this episode of Lockdown Spurs with Eric Hicks. Follow him on Twitter at HicksEric7. Let's continue on our game of buy and sell Spurs edition. And we're going to talk about John Collins now. We talked about him in the last episode of Lockdown Spurs yesterday, where the Spurs should chase him. Now we're now going to get the, the fan perspective. Look, he could have been a Spur by now. Remember, was it a couple seasons ago, maybe last year? 
you know, the Spurs were linked to him heavily and, you know, you know, obviously he stayed in Atlanta, but are you buying or selling Mr. Eric Hicks that the Spurs should continue to chase John Collins simply because he fills that big stretch big that the Spurs need? I'm buying that all the way. I'm buying that all the way. Um, the biggest thing for him that I, I think that, uh, is that he's still improving. He's still young. He's what, 24 years old. Um, you know, he's he, he's got, he's a big forward, six nine. Um, the only thing that we'd have to think about on that one, I think on that one, it would have to be a trade, would it not? Um, uh, so you know, yeah, like another sign in trade, right? Yeah. So just depending on what they would be giving up, but you know, I I think that that would be interesting. I, I wouldn't be mad at that. I would I would buy that all the way. Do you think Spurs fans would would also uh, be on board, you know, buying this question, if so to speak, of the Spurs making an effort to get Collins in a Spurs uniform? I think that they would. I think that they would. And um, and just for the, those same reasons, I mean, uh, he's been improving, you know, a lot, almost like every every single year. You know what I mean? And they, they and when you talk to or when you listen to his his coaching staff, you know. And when they bring that up, they're kind of like, ugh, like, you know, they don't want to lose him. But um, you know what I mean? Um, if they can't utilize him, uh, I think I would be happy to get him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he definitely fits a need for the Spurs. Um, you know, you know, stretch big. And that's I think that you know, all the Spurs fans say they want a big, but I think it had to be more specific than that. A stretch big, because the Spurs have a good big right now. Yaka Purdy, he's good. He's he is. defensively great. You know, Joel Embiid last season said he's one of the underrated centers in the NBA. But it's not the type of big the Spurs need in today's NBA era, uh, Eric. Right, right. And that's no disrespect to Yaka Pertle. I mean, you know, we love him down here. It's just that, it's, you know, uh, I mean, it is what it is kind of thing. It is, yeah. I mean, you, you, and then you look at that, that depth chart, you know, John, I mean, Zach Collins, excuse me, you know, we'll definitely see how durable he's going to be this upcoming season. You know, now he's going to play a full NBA season. You know, we'll see if that maybe he's really recovered from those injuries that kept him away from the court for years. Uh, Jock Landale may or may not be a spur next year. He's he's on a non-guaranteed contract. Could they make way, you know, for him to say bye-bye, Jock? Thanks, because maybe they drafted another big. And maybe they go get another big. So that leaves Pirtle, and I think that's a big issue right now for the Spurs is <clears throat> you've got a – Really good center, really good NBA center. We forget that he was a top ten pick when he was drafted. He was. I think he was. Yeah, he was number nine. But it just they gotta have a stretch big. Look at Joker with Denver. Uh, you know who else is another stretch big out there that the Spurs could use? Or just like an example, Joker is the best example right now. But but you but they gotta yeah they gotta and address that. And don't forget that all the, you know every time throughout the year you know when. Uh, there were a lot of teams that it seemed like they were inquiring about Jakob Pertle, and they were like, mm-hmm. hey, we could use that, you know. Um, sure. Yeah, even I think re- even his old team was maybe talking about my yeah. trying to get him back. And there still are, like, according to reports now, you fast forward to today, you know, there's the, there's still reports out there that Toronto, <clears throat> excuse me, is chasing uh, Pertle. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if, if this, I mean, I forget, Pertle's on the last – year of his contract with San Antonio. That's a nice tradable asset you have right there, San Antonio. If you really, really want to like bring in some, you know, either more draft picks or maybe a heavy hitter, an NBA star that's established and Proto could fit the bill. We're talking with Eric Hicks, this fan episode of Locked On Spurs, where we're buying and selling a few topics regarding the silver and black. Make sure to follow Eric on Twitter at Hicks Eric seven. When we get back our final, final, buy or sell question with mr eric hicks and we'll get his thoughts on the nba draft and the spurs but before we do that i want to talk to you about arcade one up we have big news the one the only nba jam is back arcade one up the leader in at home retro arcade games is not only bringing the best game ever back but they made it bigger than ever with a wait for it shack edition machine Yes, you finally get to have at your home an NBA Jam game. People are obsessed with NBA Jam, and I'm through to tell our listeners that you can once again play hoops with 
NBA legends in this arcade classic. Jump clear across the court and set the ball on fire in one of the most, uh, well, the first sports games ever to feature real and digitized NBA licensed team. No fouls, no free throws, no quarters required. Complete or actually compete with fan, friends and family through all new Wi Fi leaderboards, making you more connected than ever. Pre order now from arcade1up.com. That's arcade the number one up.com for an estimated early September ship date. Arcade One Up is the place for fun. They got even more classics like Golden T, Mortal Kombat, and many others just at $399. Check this out they're giving away. A, an NBA Jam Shack edition to a locked on listener. Enter for a chance to win the game console for your man cave at arcade one up.com slash locked on. That's arcade the number one up.com slash locked on. You got until July 8 to enter to win NBA Jam Shack edition console. Don't miss out. Enter today and if you start asking yourself who you're going to play with. We are back with Eric Hicks right here on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs, where he's probably drooling already to get himself an NBA Jam video game console in his own pad, huh? I was just thinking about how many, about how many, how much money I spent on that back in the day. How many quarters? I know. What was it? What was it? Robinson had it was Robinson and Sean Elliott, right? Those that was a tandem. Yeah, and then uh, it was um, was it wasn't Dennis Rodman? Was he an option? I, well, I don't remember Rodman being an option for the Spurs when no, you were playing the video games. I don't, you know what? I can. You know, I'm gonna have to go back and check that. Yeah, I gotta check that out. Yeah, but I, I remember. I remember. I know it was Elliot. I know it was Robinson for sure. Yep. Uh, was, Avery, was Avery part of that? I don't think so. No, Avery wasn't part of that. Okay, I don't think so. I could be wrong. Yeah, but, yeah, but I know they're like they're, they're I, like. Oh, they were like bobbleheads, right? Like little digitized bobblehead players. Oh, when, that, when that game came out, there were no kids around at arcade. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was high schoolers. Yes, yes, kids. We used to put quarters in machines at the malls and theaters to play video games. That was a long, 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 long time ago. All right. That's going to wrap up our buy, sell fan edition right here on Locked On Spurs with a final question for Mr. Eric Hicks. And that is... uh. Are you buying or selling that the Spurs at the draft with the number nine pick should, should draft for need or best available? Oh, man, that's a good question. All right, so I, me personally, okay, we know that more recently in the recent drafts, the Spurs have been going with, you know, best available. And, and I'm kind of a fan of that. All right, you know, like I bought into that. Um, and like I said, I and understandably so. I know that the fan base would like to go the other route with need. And you know, remember mm-hmm. I'm coming back to where they they want it, they want some bigs. You know, every time you see it, every time when the Spurs work out a guard, they just come out of nowhere. You know, and, and they just start you know throwing tomatoes, complaining like, oh, here we go again, another guard, another guard. You know, so I I, I kind of. I, I know that they that the fan base would want, and even myself too. I mean, I, I I want a big, but I just wouldn't be disappointed if they go for best available. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think right now I would be happy with like Jalen Durant. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's six eleven. Well, 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 you will be happy to know that locked on Spurs in the locked on NBA mock draft pick Jalen Durant. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, and that would be I consider a need. You know what I mean? He's he's up there, but somebody else also flew under radar, and I was, you know, and that's Dyson Daniels. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And he has been all over the board, you know, from you know going to maybe six, seven, falling out into the middle teens. But if he's there at number nine, you know, question would you know, you know, me personally, that is me personally. You know, I don't know. I, I would kind of get excited for that. Mm-hmm. Now that that would be considered, I think, like a best available at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's I think the the common knowledge is if you're an NBA team, you draft best available. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Maybe at number nine, the best available is Jalen Duran or, or, yeah. you know, or another big. Um, so yeah, the Spurs should go that route. I mean, there are reports out there that many teams feel the Spurs are going big with number nine. 
makes sense. You know, we highlighted it earlier. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I think Spurs fans are split on this. I would actually buy that they are regarding best available versus draft and need. Uh, but I mean, I mean, you don't want to be the Portland Trailblazers and you know and pass up on Michael Jordan, right? <laughs> you know, the, the Blazers they had Clyde Drexler at the time, so it, it, their train of thought was, hey, we don't need another swing guard because we got Clyde, and right. then MJ, you know, turned into MJ. So you don't and, want that to happen again. And, and, and no, no matter who the Spurs decide to get, you know, whether it be best available or the need, you know, route, um, I think we can all agree that Spurs fans just don't want to see anybody who they're going to see ship up to Austin, you know, and spend the majority of time over there throughout the year. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, that's, I do believe that. Well, are you going to buy or sell that the number nine pick will be in Austin, even if it's for a few weeks? Even if it's for a month, what do you think? Oh, yeah, like you know, for if it's for a little bit of time, they don't don't want to just see him just you know getting an apartment up there. I guess what you could say. Yeah, I I would not be surprised if the Spurs send their number nine if they still have number nine. Who knows? They may move it or trade up or whatever. But if they stick with nine, you know, I would not be surprised if the hear the Spurs announce. Okay, so so and so is going to Austin. See you later, number nine pick. We'll see you down the road. Yeah. <laughs> but see you in a couple of weeks or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, now that, yeah, that's cool. an but I still yeah. would like to see them trade up, actually. Yeah, I mean, look, I get it. If they're gonna send him to Austin for the Austin Spurs uh time, I, I fine, but don't bury him there. Right. You know, you're gonna right. give him like a month, okay, fine. Give him a month. You know, but yeah, let's not bury him there. Him we're not, a, no, not to get an apartment. <laughs> yeah, not to get an apartment, not to be like yeah, because remember when DeJounte Murray was up there for quite a while, too. But then that was different because Tony Parker was still there. And, and that was different you know, times, yeah. Yeah, different times, yeah. Keldon, Keldon was the first one to really start that trend towards, like, half a season in Austin, in and out, and then the rest stay in San Antonio. He did it. Primo did it last year. Right. Uh, so hopefully that'll continue. The only one, again, the only anomaly is Joe Weiss's camp. He definitely stayed in Austin for quite right. some time. Yeah, yeah. But it they yeah. got him a house. Yeah, they got him a house on Austin. But anyway, we're done talking on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. We want to hear from you. Do you agree, disagree with Eric? You're, you're a Spurs fan. Uh, you know, tell Eric, hey, you know, you got it wrong. We should be chasing, you know, Aiden, not Levine. What's wrong with you? Eric, tell them how they can chat with you. Yeah, if, uh, it's at Hicks, Eric7. Um, they want to, uh, just, you know, talk Spurs stuff or, once again, cards. Or do you want to feel free to yep. throw a tomato at me there? Um, go ahead, man. <laughs> well, what, what's what's the next basketball card you got on your target on your radar there? Uh, uh, for some reason, I've every time the, the Josh Primo just keeps uh, popping up. Yeah, yeah. Every time he pops up, man, I just I you know I'm like a sucker for him. Um, I I'm kind of thinking about going to the shop later on. I'm gonna I need to try to start switching. I'm gonna switch to a Devin Vassell. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give me a couple of those, and then, uh, you know, I, I think I'm gonna start switching to those today. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, again, follow Eric on Twitter. He'll definitely show off his cards that he gets, and a lot of fans definitely enjoy uh, collecting, trading, selling basketball cards, and Eric definitely is one of them. And by the way, the first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts, draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today, and your first should always be Locked On Spurs. Subscribe to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast: Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, now on YouTube. We appreciate that as well. Uh, we appreciate your support, your support each and every time. So for Eric Hicks, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.